Regardless of where you live in Canada, a visit to the family doctor for an ear infection will yield a fairly predictable result. A short conversation and examination, a prescription for antibiotics, and several days of rest and recovery. So how do your health care providers keep up to date about managing more complex care for, say, diabetes, heart disease, or cancer? Some of the things we learned in school are no longer valid. And there are so many papers being published that it's like having your mouth to a fire hose. If you had to try and read all those papers, it would be impossible. That's where clinical practice guidelines, commonly called CPGs, come in. CPGs are standardized, evidence-based recommendations used by healthcare providers to make informed decisions about your care. The textbook definition is a systematically developed statement that assists practitioner and patient decision making, and it's related to a specific clinical circumstance, so a disease state or a set of symptoms. Donc, c'est une intégration de beaucoup de données, de connaissances et de savoir pour réussir à avoir des recommandations qui soient correctes. In practice, CPGs can range from simple checklists for a minor health problem to elaborate decision trees or diagnosis pathways for more complex conditions. These guidelines will help your healthcare provider better understand, recommend, and deliver the best possible healthcare for your situation. Well, CPGs can be used in different ways by, um, by healthcare professionals. First of all, they can often be used to answer a clinical question that comes up when a doctor is seeing a patient or a nurse is seeing a patient. So if the physician is not sure about what the right treatment options are, they might go and look up a, a clinical practice guidelines on their computer or they may have them in their office to look at. CPGs are important decision-making tools, allowing busy clinicians to deliver the best possible care based on dynamic and ever-changing clinical research. Research. Well, I think when we look at sort of uh, clinical practice, we're aware that it's constantly the knowledge base is constantly changing. There's always new research evidence, and if you're just a citizen reading the newspaper, you'll often find uh, news items about a breakthrough in treatment or some other sort of aspect of care that needs to be changed. And the issue is for a busy clinician, whether it's a physician or a nurse, they just can't keep up to date with the research evidence if they're trying to do it by themselves. Clinical practice guidelines are not just cookbook medicine or a recipe for, uh, for taking care of individual patients. Uh, they are the summaries of evidence that should start the dialogue. Bon guide de pratique devrait être basé sur les meilleures données scientifiques disponibles, mais aussi sur des éléments qui tiennent compte des préférences, des valeurs des patients. The movement toward evidence-based healthcare has been gaining ground for several decades. Since the early 1990s, Canada has been enhancing the quality of health care by improving the way clinical knowledge is shared and incorporated into routine practice. CPGs are a product of this approach. When well designed and used appropriately, CPGs can lead to better and more consistent quality of care for patients. We have very strong evidence that clinical practice guidelines can improve the quality of care and appropriateness of care, reduce the use of inappropriate tests or treatments, and improve efficiency in healthcare. So from a healthcare perspective, one of the things that clinical practice guidelines can do is, is start to standardize care across geographic areas. One other thing we're aware about is globally, if you look at healthcare practices, they vary quite a lot from, say, town to town or from hospital to hospital, or practice to practice. While there are many benefits to CPGs, widespread adoption of CPGs presents many challenges in Canada. In Canada, we don't have a national approach to clinical practice guidelines, uh, unlike many other countries in the developed world. We have the will now, I think, uh, and the recognition of the need to get together. Collaboration among parties is important to facilitate the development, dissemination and implementation of CPGs. Parties include government and policymakers, healthcare managers, frontline clinicians, and patients. One of Health Council of Canada's goals in bringing attention to clinical practice guidelines is to start a dialogue or, uh, uh, or an ongoing conversation among all the different parties about how we can reform the healthcare system so that clinical practice guidelines are more widely used. 
The Health Council has developed a series of videos to provide an introduction to CPGs through the eyes of those who design, disseminate, and use them. In the next three videos, we'll explore the various sides of that conversation. We'll look at the opportunities for CPGs. We'll explore some approaches to CPG development and implementation. And we'll look at some of the challenges that remain for wider use of CPGs in the Canadian healthcare system. To learn more about the Health Council of Canada's video series on CPGs, visit healthcouncilcanada.ca/cpg.